This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on fostering growth in India's space startup landscape. The participants are Dr. T. V. Venkateshwaran, Senior Scientist, Vigyan Prasad and Arjun Chaudhary, Anchor. So I'm joined by Dr. T. V. Venkateshwaran, who's a Senior Scientist with the Vigyan Prasad. A warm welcome to you on this uh, recording and program, sir. Thank you. Dr. Venkateshwaran would be talking to us about the growth of what is now known as the space economy and the startup enterprises that have sprung up in order to serve this economy both domestically and abroad. So Dr. Venkateshwaran, let's begin by understanding what the space economy is for the benefit of our listeners and how is it that we have as startup enterprises made such a strong mark in this industry? The traditionally the space economy meant for example launching satellite built by somebody else and then earning income from that launch or building a satellite and giving that to someone i mean basically selling it and then through that earning revenue or providing training services and through that uh, either earning revenue or uh, goodwill these are the traditional space economy but people are now talking about space economy 4.0 something like the industry 4.0 they are talking about space economy 4.0 this uh, space economy 4.0 has essentially emerged because of the changing situation in the space industry as a whole see earlier people were interested in sending robots satellite maybe uh, 10 tons or uh, 20 tons to uh, deep space something like 35000 kilometers from earth and so on and through that they established communication services and so on and then they expected that satellite to function for 20 years and more but we all know electronics is so fast advancing that even a mobile phone which is about a few years old is obsolete so if you put a satellite which is full of electronics 20 years old in the space i mean it's history so now there is a new thinking that instead of putting a big satellite lasting for many years and so far away why don't we put a lot of small satellites at the low earth orbit and then decommission them and then replace them with the newer and newer satellites with the newer and newer electronics this is a new thinking that is going on that's why if you see in the recent past coming I mean, there is huge number of launches of uh, micro satellites mini satellites some of them weighing just a uh, 0.5 kg that's the kind of satellite that are uh, that are being put in the space this change has uh, provided uh, new opportunities for launches new opportunities for uh, building satellites and uh, new opportunities for using space technology for number of uh, applications for uh, common person application from uh, location services to various services this is where the isro and uh, with the support of isro the uh, startups which are coming up in india is expecting to garner substantial part of this growing space economy the earlier thinking was that any launch is based on its payload so yeah. the cost benefit was computed calculated based on that the budgetary allocations were based on what that a uh, payload capacity is of the uh, launch vehicle what is the thinking now you just mentioned about the payload being less than a kilogram so yeah. how does the startup industry actually pitch their idea to investors because now you have investments more than 100 million dollars already into 189 startups from one in 2014 so now the new thinking is that uh, i put a satellite for a particular application so it's not the satellite it's not the launch but it's the uh, overall application put together that is being costed and then uh, evaluated i may want to put a satellite to let's say study a particular region where particular uh, big industry is supposed to come and then using the satellite which may just be in space for about a year you don't need to be there for more than that so using that uh, do uh, remote sensing do whatever that you want including map the uh, geology of that area and so on very focused in a very small area and with that you will be able to get a much better local planning compared to let's say ground based effort that is a new thinking so the overall investment into this satellite launch everything put together they take it in that way and then say that this application is worth this kind of expenditure that's a new thinking that is happening and because you are launching only small satellite uh, a small launch vehicle is more than enough in fact you can collect packets from various people meaning that many numbers multiple satellites can be launched at uh, one go so that even the launch cost can be uh, shared so this is the kind of new thinking that is happening within the space industry currently dr venkateshwaran now we also have the indian space policy 
for yeah. 2023. How do you see this policy facilitating the growth of the space economy, especially for startups? So this uh, policy actually creates an enabling environment. Rather, it uh, envisages that it will create an enabling environment where our existing resources, like uh, ISRO's facilities, ISRO's expertise, would be available for the startups to hold on. When you are a small baby, when you are trying to crawl, you need something to hold on to stand up, to make few steps. Right. So, and that has to be something which is uh, sure and certain, right? I mean, it can't be something which is flimsy that uh, a child can hold a toddler can hold and then try to walk. So ISRO is a very reliable institution. So using that, the uh, policy envisages that we'll be able to make a lot of uh, startups to stand up and run. That's the broad framework that it is uh, looking. In the context of the space industry 4.0, where new possibilities, new opportunities are uh, coming up. So who is this startup servicing? Uh, you have obviously the government of India's uh, requirements uh, as uh, a buyer of these services when they are launching uh, satellites and probes into space, uh, into the travel to the moon or to the Mars and that kind of launch requirements. Uh, but in the private sector, who are the customers for these startups? So there are many kinds of customers. One is, of course, obviously industry. Let's say, for example, you are an industry which wants to explore a particular region, a very, very focused area where you want to find, let's say, the geological structure, you want to find the inclination of the land, also find where are the habitations, how are, for example, power lines going in that area, so that you will be able to plan certain things in that area. So you need that kind of very detailed information. So you will be an industry which will be using small satellites to map that uh, geomap that area and then get that kind of thing. That's, for example, I'm just giving you one uh, random example. Or you might be, for example, uh, a group which is trying to provide support to a fisher community. Where do you want to uh, fishers to go? Where is a good catch? So we want to give that kind of information services to fisher people so that they'll be able to have a better catch with the less strenuous work. You don't waste the petrol in, you know, searching about fish. So there are many such new applications which are coming up. So that is the industry. There are also academia. For example, I want to study how, let's say, the uh, radiation belt is changing. I may put a small satellite. I may create a small ground station. And I may study, I may get a data. And from that, I'll be, uh, be able to have a much better understanding of, let's say, atmospheric phenomena or things like that. So there is industry, there is academia. These are the two major new entrants which are there. Third important entrant is very diffuse, nebulous. Broadly, we can call as a public. Of course, public don't directly get into it. Somebody creates an app which is a space technology based and using that app, public is actually using a space technology in their daily life. So, for example, very simple thing, whenever you are using a app-based, uh, let's say, ride-share app, you are using, in a way, space technology. So there are many such uh, apps which can be built based on dedicated satellites. That's what uh, people are working on. That will bring in ordinary people as uh, daily use. As part of the space economy, startups also providing training services. So what is the status of labor input into all this resource allocation for the space economy, including launch vehicles and being able to deliver something at a cost-effective manner? So one is uh, currently, if you look at the Indian space market, it's uh, growing at something like about 4.3%, whereas the uh, global average is about only 2.2. So that is, we are growing at uh, twice that of the global average. So that's one. So currently, the market is estimated to be something about $8 billion, which by 2040, they expect that uh, will become uh, $40 billion. I mean, if we grow in the same way. Of course, there are reports which say that if we do some new things, if we do uh, some very innovative things, this 40 billion can become 100 billion. That is 60 billion extra we'll be able to earn within this uh, particular period. That's one thing. So currently, if you look at it, even in this uh, growth of 4.3 percent, we are, I mean, Indian space industry is contributing to about uh, 0.25 percent of uh, GDP. And uh, this can double by uh, 2040, which means that something like about 3 million additional jobs can be created by this uh, new effort, if you make an uh, effort to uh, fully utilize all the opportunities that are available in the space market. Usage of uh, space applications across domains. So you mentioned about 
fisheries, uh, tracking the movement of fish across oceans, so it helps uh, uh, fishing be more cost effective as well. What about yeah. mining? Uh, mining is a major industry in India. How do you yeah. see the space economy uh, facilitating that there is also theoretical observations that you know you have mining the asteroid belt as a far-fetched journey into this economy what about mining that is below the ground see mining of uh, space objects whether it is asteroids or moon perhaps a space industry uh, 5.0 or 5, 6.0 okay that's in future but uh, space being used space technology is being used for mining on earth Particularly today, there is a dearth of rare earth elements, which are very important for uh, green technologies, for newer AI-based technologies, new batteries. Many of the new technologies which are coming, which are called as the Industry 4.0, they require a very many number of uh, rare earth elements. To identify them, where it is available, where uh, whether that uh, place is uh, environmentally acceptable for mining and so on and so forth, you need uh, quite a lot of uh, remote sensing abilities. And these remote sensing abilities has to be very focused, very fine-tuned to locate a particular place and so on. So here, that's another uh, major area where uh, uh, low Earth orbit uh, remote sensing is uh, being thought of, being uh, proposed, being advocated by industries and others. So mining is also will be one such, like for example, various kinds of resources including mining. One another important thing perhaps I think we need to also mention here is disaster preparedness. If there is a disaster in the area, perhaps a small satellite immediately launched can provide much better solution of how one can mitigate the suffering in that area, how one can mitigate that the further disasters don't happen in that area, you know, local area planning and things of that kind. So even in disaster planning, people are looking at uh, using a small micro satellite with appropriate launch vehicle. I mean, you can't uh, wait for a GSLV to launch a micro satellite. So you'll need appropriate uh, launch vehicle. That is where the startups and so on. Dr. Venkateshwaran, uh, how do you see the partnership between ISRO and NASA helping the startup industries uh, to evolve into a stand-up uh, venture? So ISRO is uh, actually working with uh, multiple uh, international space agencies. In fact, uh, ISRO is saying that if it is uh, worth and then gainful for India and uh, Indian industry and Indian people, I don't think uh, ISRO would be uh, thinking twice with uh, collaborating with anyone. So with the NASA, there are a number of uh, projects that uh, ISRO is uh, planning. Some of its satellites will carry uh, NASA payload. For example, even Chandrayaan-3 had a small uh, payload from NASA, which it has carried and then uh, collaborated with NASA. Similarly, uh, there are some missions, including uh, Artemis mission of uh, NASA. ISRO is planning to be part of it. There are a number of such negotiations with the uh, Japanese space agencies. Traditionally, ISRO has been interacting with the Russian space agencies and the European space agencies. So with the uh, growing clout and growing trustworthiness of ISRO, number of international agencies are coming forward to uh, collaborate with uh, ISRO in many of its uh, deep space and other work. Thank you, uh, Dr. T.V. Venkateshwaran, for being with us on this uh, special program and interview and telling us in detail how uh, startups have benefited uh, from the space economy, which is set to grow from $40 billion, fingers crossed, to maybe $100 billion by 2040. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. You were listening to a discussion on fostering growth in India's space startup landscape. The participants were Dr. T. V. Venkateshwaran, Senior Scientist, Vigyan Prasar, and Arjun Chaudhary, Anchor. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 928-909-4044.
ताज की ताज की ताज